Turning now to succession ecology, we look at how ecosystems change over time. A typical path of succession begins with annual weeds and goes through various stages. If the soils and the climate will support continued evolution of more and more complex systems, the process may extend all the way to a hardwood forest. Ecological succession is a gradual, generally slow change of species that live in an area over time. Replacement of one plant community to, to an, with another plant community. Succession generally be begins with relatively few plants and animals and develops through increasing complexity until a stable or a self-perpetuating climax community exists. Succession can occur in all natural ecosystems and there are two general types of succession. One we'll call primary and the other we'll call secondary. Primary succession is a process of creating life in an area where no life exists and is relatively rare on this planet today. Secondary succession is a process of restabilization following disturbance and happens all the time. Primary succession can begin on bare rock. Secondary succession is initiated by a disturbance to an ecosystem such as fire. Primary succession may be something as uh, dramatic as a new volcano and lava, lava flow, or as lichens beginning to grow on a rock. Primary succession can begin with bare rock, move to simple plants like lichens and mosses, eventually herbs and weeds and grasses, shrubs and pines and immature plant, hardwood plants, and eventually a stable community of a hardwood forest. We're going to look more closely at this. This is a process that takes hundreds of years. New islands that pop up from volcanic activity is an example of primary succession. The first species to occupy space in primary succession are called pioneer species. The arrival of things such as lichens that do not need soil to survive indicate the beginning of primary succession. The process of colonization of a new area generally begins with lichens. The death and decay of these early plants, these early lichens, provide the beginning of a substrate for soil. Soil is needed to support more complex plants with root systems. Here's the beginning of life on volcanic ash. You can see some of the lichens forming around the edges here and then simple plants and then more complex plants forming over time. Most of this area, of course, is still ash and has not been uh, colonized yet. Once the lichens have decomposed and formed a little bit of soil mass, simple plants like mosses and ferns begin to grow in the new soil. Ferns and mosses are generally second, the second kind of plant you see after lichens. These simple plants die adding more organic material. Soil begins to build up. This is a very, very slow process. Death and decay create more life. As these plants decompose, more soil builds up and deeper rooted plants such as shrubs and trees can survive. As plant biodiversity increases, insects, small birds and mammals begin to move in. And once what was bare rock now supports a co complex ecosystem. Secondary succession begins in places where there already has a soil in some living organisms. And therefore, secondary succession occurs faster because it doesn't have to establish new, new plant life on bare rock. An example is after a forest fire, 
or a volcano. Secondary succession occurs when there's a system in place that's partially destroyed by some natural occurrence. When the existing community has been cleared by fire, tornado, etc., a new community can begin. The key is soil. If soil exists, secondary succession can take place five to ten times faster than primary succession on bare rock. Ecological communities that seem very stable to us are actually changing quite rapidly over time. Major disturbances such as fire, flood, storm, droughts, and volcanoes can cause dramatic effects. Mount St. Helens was an example. The explosion of Mount St. Helens provided ecologists with an opportunity to study secondary succession. They were surprised at how quickly life returned to this mountainside. Mount St. Helens provided an opportunity to study both primary and secondary succession. Wherever there was lava flow and completely wiped out the vegetation, primary succession began. This is the same primary succession that occurred on Heron Island after a, a new island appeared due to volcanic um, activity in the ocean. Mount St. Helens volcano eruption also caused a lot of forest fires in the nearby area. So secondary succession also occurred. But here, in this case, the soil was in place and so plants develop, redevelop much more quickly. Grassland fires provide another example of secondary succession. In this case, frequent fires maintain the ecosystem in this phase of development. Shrubs and trees never really have an opportunity to grow because of the fires. Secondary succession doesn't have to be quite this dramatic, of course. A single tree falling in the woods can create an opening where secondary succession begins. A gopher mound or an outbreak of gypsy moth can all cause a change in the ecosystem that results in secondary succession. Even with mature ecosystems, such as a deciduous forest, a tree could fall in the woods or a fire could start this process all over again. Disturbance is generally followed by grasses and shrubs, eventually small trees and the climax forest returns again. This relatively stable system is actually a system in dynamic equilibrium, changing constantly, but remaining the same. A system imbalance or dynamic equilibrium is referred to as a climax community. It doesn't mean there's no changes, but changes occur over time in cyclic patterns. A, a deciduous forest may be a climax community. So may a grassland that it's stalled in a particular successionary phase due to constant burning. This climax community is mature and relatively stable and yet constantly changing. It's kind of the final stage, but it's only final until something else happens, some other disturbance. Any particular region has its own set of climax species, which will persist after succession is finished, until another disturbance occurs and clears the area, and the world goes round and round. You remember from our unit on biomes that the two factors influencing what kind of a biome will develop are temperature and rainfall. And in fact, the biomes we studied are all climax communities, relatively stable and yet ever changing. If I ask you on the exam, does ecological, ecological succession ever stop? The short answer is no. That's it for today.